Hello, everybody. Welcome back to ADHD Power Tools. Um, and we're back with Jeff Copper. And um, we're going to go ahead and continue talking about emotional self-regulation. And today I want to ask you, Jeff, how does executive function play a role in emotional self-regulation? <laughs> okay, so um, I, I, I subscribe to Dr. Barclay's model of executive function. Uh, Dr. Thomas Brown's got one. Um, I think there's a lot of them out there. Everybody's coming together and defining the executive function. So you'll find some differences, but no, I favor Dr. Barclay's for a, a few other reasons. But anyway, I'm going to speak to it that one. And executive functioning is... The way he defines it, and I don't do it the way that they develop in the brain, but it all starts to me with self-awareness. <clears throat> self-awareness is a huge predictor of success in life. The more self-aware you are, the, the better you do as in general. Now, if you have self-awareness and you have emotional self-awareness, we've talked about that, the Human beings are the only animal that actually can change their emotions. It's not an easy thing to do, but you can go from a state where you're angry and calm down. If you're self-aware and if you can shift your emotion, you're actually able to restrain yourself. So those are three individual executive functions, but collectively when they act together, that's self-regulation, the ability to pause, right? Downregulate your emotions and choose a different path as opposed to automatically going into a direction. Now, I'm using emotion in there, but I'm going to come back to it in a second. The next uh, uh, executive functions is visual imagery to be able to see the future, picture something in your mind, uh, verbal working memory, which is self talk. Um, Believe it or not, neuro we all talk inside our heads to ourselves towards a goal, and the ability to play with information um, in your mind. And so, the ability to think inside your head towards a goal collectively is an executive function. And so to illustrate this, I and, and the role this kind of plays is often, as a matter of fact, why don't we do this right now? Brooke, how about an intention exercise? You game? I'm game. I love intentionality. Okay. I don't want you to write anything down, but I can you remember exponents in school? Like I was a math teacher. Power? Good. Can you calculate three of the power of five? Three times three. Times three, times three. No, I would have to write it down. But okay. I could do three times three, which is nine, and then three times three, which is nine, and then nine times nine is eighty-one times three. Times so three. eighty-one yeah. times three is three two hundred and forty-three. Exactly. Now, how do you do that exercise? Not for the reason you thought. Number one, that is working memory. You've got to calculate the numbers inside your head and keep track of how many times you've multiplied three times itself. Not always. People get kind of lost when they're going from 27 to 81. But that's not why I had you do the exercise. Did you see yourself roll your eyes before you started? Absolutely. That was an emotional reaction that you had because thinking was going to be difficult. You started it and you gave up in the middle of it. And so often when I do this exercise, I'll get a oh crap, or I'm not any good at math. That's the emotional, remember another time we talked about it's a re, emotion yeah. is a reflexive response to that. And when thinking is difficult, and this is the part of ADHD that people don't really pay attention to. They focus on the lack of focus. Like I'm not doing what my intention is. Mm -hmm. But if you understand this, when thinking is difficult, mm -hmm. okay, there's a reflexive emotional reaction to escape to something more comfortable. And so what I like to highlight when I'm sure. doing that exercise was you rolled your eyes and people go, I'm not any good at math. That's the emotional reaction that they're having when thinking is difficult. So when we start talking about emotions and ADHD, there's a few things. One, when you're um, in, a, in a situation where you're feeling criticized or whatever, you have that flight, flight, or respect freeze response, which is a, uh, it's a, mm -hmm. it's a survival mechanism too. But when thinking is difficult, right, there's this urge to escape the pain and move to something that's a little bit more comfortable. And this is the part that I don't think sure. a lot of people really pay a lot of attention to. They're focused on the focus issue, but the root cause is often thinking. So the idea that is if you sense. make thinking easier, emotionally, you don't have the urge to escape and go to do something else. And so going back to the question is, <clears throat> Because executive function is impaired, because thinking is impaired inside your head, there's a very big emotional response and component. So there's the one, you're escaping the thinking, but mm -hmm. also when you think about it, to be self-aware, 
is threatening you because we think of self-image that's who we want to project ourselves that's who we'd like to be but actually to look yourself in the mirror and say well this is what i am that's uncomfortable and Mm -hmm. people have a tendency to resist it so there's a lot of people out there who know a lot about adhd they've watched this they've gone they're all over the place but they still struggle because they don't own it. They don't want to have ADHD. And so they resist it. They hear maybe me talk about how you got to think out loud. They hear that, but then they go back to their office and they try to think inside their head and sure. they hear the that words, but they get so, this is an emotional reflexive, emotional reaction of not wanting to do that. So you can see it's kind of showing up in a couple different places. One, it's getting in the way of self-awareness of owning yourself. It's also showing up when thinking is really difficult, which is funny because we had talked about this in, an, in another episode that right now emotions are not a part of the diagnostic criteria while they were mm-hmm. before 1970. We begin to see that emotions are front and center in this, this, this um, impairment that is really the elephant in the room that most people until recently really didn't pay much attention to. Sure. Absolutely. I would agree. Um, I also like to look at the Dr. Thomas Brown model and I Regardless, if you're doing Dr. Barclay or Brown, emotion just ties into every single thing. Like you said, the working memory, that's that frustration, the effort, um, activation, focus, action. And I like how you said sometimes we'll retreat um, if uh, if something seems frightening to us. For instance, like why do so many kids with ADHD play video games so frequently? Because it's safe. They know how to do it. It's a safe way to communicate and socialize with others without being seen. Um, why do ADHDers sometimes not try things that are uncomfortable or new to them because it's not safe? So we have that emotional mm-hmm. response to it. And the older we get, the more complex our brain is yep. and the more, you know, I know that it takes up until I think 25 years for your brain to completely yep. um, adult, but sometimes it can take 30 years. And um, yeah, the more we have memories and, um, our brain is, um, forms, then it becomes even more complex. Yep. Yep. It, it's, 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 it's baked in there. It's, it's, like I said, it's like the elephant in the room that people don't pay a lot of attention to, nor do people with ADHD really give it a lot of credibility. Um, you know, one of the things that I, I do is, you know, Brooke, can you think about how many people do you know actually question their feelings the metacognition piece like when you hear people like i feel i feel i feel i feel i feel like, like if you how really do you feel that people, why do you feel that right yeah the question is is how many people do you know actually yeah. question their feelings yeah not many and it's funny because we give our clients an executive function questionnaire before they start with us and metacognition sometimes comes out really high for some people and as a weakness for others so yep. yeah there's not many question their feelings. So we've talked about in other places that a feeling is a physical manifestation of emotion. So when you have a feeling, you're kind of jumping to a conclusion or an end and your feelings often are deceiving you. And the the reason I'm bringing this up is if you've got ADHD, one of the best self-awareness is to start questioning your feeling. Like I'm having this feeling. Why am I having this feeling? This is a valid feeling. I'm not saying they're not always true, but if you never question your feelings, you have to understand that they're deceiving you. And so thereby you're behind the eight ball because you're running on false information in order to manage what's going on. And it's a challenge for people with ADHD to to do this and realize that their feelings betray them, but it's really helpful for them to gain that self-awareness to kind of like from a metacognition, catch themselves and override it. Then we go back, you know, thinking is difficult. Once they catch themselves and they got to calculate three to the power of five, all they want to do is escape again, which is why it's often helpful to get a coach or somebody else so that you can Mm -hmm. externalize thinking to make it easier for you to kind of think through. I mean, after all, I mean, a good, a good ADHD coach, not really solving any problems. They're just there. There to help the person think through what they haven't been able to think through by themselves because it was more difficult in a safe and you know non-confrontational um, environment. So it's 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 kind of built in for there. Absolutely. I um I also would say that people might not question themselves because they're afraid that they're going to not be productive by taking the time to question themselves. So, oh, I don't have the time because I'm rushing to do this next thing, but then you're stuck in your feelings and your thoughts and it's, you know, really (laughs) manifesting everywhere. Yeah. So this is, this is what's, you know, I, 
some people like roll their eyes at me, but like 80% of procrastination is rooted in ambiguity. I mean, if you don't really know what to do, you go do something else. So this exactly. is where fear is starts getting, I'm a, I have, I have fear. I have fear. Okay. Yeah. You have fear because you don't really know what to do, but I don't know how fear like dwelling on the emotional fear is that remember, forget everything and run <laughs> as mm-hmm. if you walk back and say, okay, really I, I, what's hard. What do I not know? And identify what's ambiguous and go solve for that problem. You can actually then go move forward. But again, that reflexive reaction to say fear, because when you think about it, going to an emotion is actually an escape of thinking. Mm-hmm. Like I can just go there because it sounds perverted really, but um, an emotion is stimulating and people with it. It is. It gives you dopamine. Yeah. Yeah. Even though, even though it's uncomfortable, it's still stimulating. So counterintuitively shaming yourself is a lot easier work-wise and you get stimulation than actually thinking through the problem. And so there's an incentive in a sense to escape to that. And it's a lot of people with ADHD. I mean, they don't like me saying that, but I can also say you can't treat ADHD through the lens of shame and blame. And so, you know, logically it makes some sense. That doesn't mean a person with ADHD is easy for them to override it. But, you know, we're going back to the question, this notion of emotions is really embedded in all this stuff. And when you begin to understand, think ADHD is a, a, a executive functioning parent, one of a thinking impairment. And when it's mm-hmm. difficult, you can start seeing the escape and the running around and chasing your tail all over the place. And so what do you do? The best thing is have the awareness to understand what's going on in your head, have the metacognition, and then have somebody like yourself working with these people to kind of think them way through that so they can pause, down-regulate, and think, and problem-solve, which is one of the things. I'm not a big tip, trick, or strategy person because there's usually an executive function that's getting in the way, but it's really about problem-solving on an individual level. Um, mm-hmm. and you know, it's, 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 that's, that's the challenge though. We all hated word problems in school because you had to read all this stuff, identify the relevant information, put the relevant information together in some type of a sequence to solve the problem. In other words, we had to derive the equation. Sure. That's a pain in the butt. Well, just give me the equation. Let me solve the problem. Well, right. I can give you too many, back- too many steps. Yep. And so people kind of escaped and at the end of the day. It's, it's, it's a lot about owning your ADHD and learning how to problem solve for yourself to be effective.